Hey guys, Christian here. Welcome back to another video. So you've owned your BMW for quite a bit and the car's not really running as optimal as they used to be. Um, it's running a little bit sluggish, you're getting less gas mileage, and maybe you've lost a little bit of power. Well, I might just have a solution for you guys, and it's a very easy DIY, very simple to do. It should take a total of like 10 minutes, and that's it. It'll fix all those issues. Let me show you exactly what the fix is. But mind this, this is for the E93 335i. Yes, it's another exhaust. Uh, I'll cover that in another video. But this right here is going to be the solution that we're going to focus on today. This right here is an oil catch can. What does it do? Well, it catches oil, but that's not the entire answer. You see, many modern cars come equipped with direct fuel injection engines, which compared to port injection engines are typically more efficient since the fuel is sprayed directly into the cylinders versus over the intake valves. But there's a compromise. As the engine works and the pistons go through their cycle, pressure accumulates within the crankcase and is released as blow-by, which is essentially a mixture of oil, fuel, buildup that makes it past the piston rings and out the PCV system and into the intake system. Over time, those deposits end up settling on the intake valves, which can cause all sorts of idling issues. And that's where the oil catch can comes into play. It's pretty much there to reduce the amount of blow by that makes it into the intake system. I'll leave a link to this exact oil catch can down in the description below. Installing an oil catch can is not only beneficial on BMW cars, this pretty much applies to most modern cars out there that use direct fuel injection. It's the same concept where pressure builds up within the crankcase, it gets released as blow by, it gets circulated back into the intake system, and then the deposits cake up your intake valves. This oil catch can is from VRSF. If you guys are very familiar with my channel, you would know that I'm a big believer of their products they sell some quality parts for a relatively affordable price so i decided to get the old catch can and give it a try as far as build quality goes it's very very solid pretty hefty to be honest um powder coated in this like satin or matte black it feels very nice to the touch it seems like it's gonna hold up really really well once you open it up it's a very simple system this is where all the deposits the oil the gas mixtures the particles it's all gonna sit in here if you look at this top section there's a baffle section right here in fact it looks like there's multiple layers of it one two three four five so i can see like six layers of this baffle system here which is pretty cool normally on all catch cans i've seen like a single baffle system here and sometimes a little filter here and that's about it this one has multiple layers it's probably more effective this way that's pretty cool and of course you get an o-ring to make sure that nothing leaks out of this catch can so essentially how the system works is you'll screw this in Ooh, Ooh that's satisfying so ideally what's gonna happen is that the blow by is gonna come from the engine, the crankcase, come through the PCV system. The oil catch can is gonna collect the oil, the deposits right here. And because of the baffle system, it's gonna hopefully keep it down there or keep as much as it can. Then cleaning air is gonna come out here into your intake system over your valves. And ideally you're gonna have less carbon buildup, meaning your car is gonna be a lot more fluid, not as sluggish, better gas mileage, more power and now for today's video sponsor so by far the number one type of questions that i get either via the youtube comment section or instagram private messaging is diagnostic related questions people asking me what's wrong with their car the truth is that it's very hard for me or even a full-time technician to explain to you what's wrong but i do have a solution for you guys carly let me show you guys how easy it is to check your car's health. All you need is the Carly wireless adapter and an Android or Apple device. Select check for issues and Carly does all the legwork and runs a thorough scan of your car's computer. You'll essentially get a report card telling you what needs to be addressed. What's cool is that Carly not only tell you what's wrong, but it also gives you possible solutions to fix the issue. Select and search for more information takes you straight to the web where you can find DIY videos and articles regarding a specific issue. As you can see, it's like having a personal mechanic's brain with you at all times. This is super super handy my absolutely favorite thing about carly is the ability to code and unlock hidden features which is freaking awesome let me show you guys an example there is a huge amount of features you can code using carly so many in fact that i didn't even get to try them all but one thing that stood out was the digital speedometer all i had to do was enable the feature within the app and seconds later i had a digital speedometer Get 15% off your adaptive purchase by using the code VIRAL on Carly's website, or you can just use the link that's in the description below. Huge thanks to Carly for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the content. Let me show you what else came with the old catch can system from VRSF. You have two hoses right here. I believe this is going to be the outlet one. And then we have another one right here. You see like this curve right here. 
this one's going to be the inlet. You have one of the hoses attached to the left side, which is the inlet, and then you have the other hose attached to the right side, which is going to be the outlet that gets funneled over to the intake manifold. It may sound a little bit confusing, so let me go ahead and start the DIY and show you exactly how everything works. We'll be doing this DIY on my E93 335i. It does carry the N54 engine. Because of the twin turbo setup, there's an excessive amount of blow by these engines have, and you get a lot of buildup and the intake valves right here. So this was a must for me, especially because I decided to increase power, which meant more boost, more fuel, and at the end of the day, more deposits on the intake valves. On many modern cars, they normally have the PCV valve easily accessible up top here, and then it runs straight into the intake system. But of course, this is BMW we're talking about here, so they're gonna make things more difficult on purpose. My PCV valve is all the way back there, like behind the engine here. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove the cow filter, uh, all the trims, all the plastics here. So yeah, let's do that. All right, so everything's off. I should be able to now better explain what's going on. You got pressure that builds within the crankcase, blow by gets through. Um, it gets funneled out through the PCV valve that goes into the inlet tray here. Uh, intake sucks in air, so all the blow by the air goes all the way down into the turbocharger. Turbocharger pushes it out through the intercooler to get cooled, and it goes into the charge pipe, which is right here. And then it ends up in the intake manifold. Some of it makes it pass into the engine where it gets burned up, the blow by that is. And some of it gets trapped on the intake valves and that's what creates carbon deposits or carbon buildup. This is why it's so common on these type of engines when you start taking things apart, like the charge pipe, the intakes, the intercooler, you'll see like they're coated on the inside with like this oil residue. That my friends is blow by that's coming from the crankcase and that's what's getting trapped on the intake valves. And this is why it's such a good idea to get an oil catch can, especially on an engine like this, like the N54 or even the N55. This is gonna limit the amount of carbon buildup that makes it to the intake valves, meaning that the car is gonna run a lot more fluid since the intake valves are gonna be much cleaner and you won't have to do that much maintenance as far as taking it over to a shop to get the valves clean with like a walnut blast. One quick favor guys, before I begin the DIY, I wanna help out as many BMW owners as I possibly can and you guys can help me do that by just hitting the like button. The more likes I get, the greater the chance that YouTube is gonna take this video and surface it to a bigger audience and hopefully I can help out more BMW brothers and sisters. All right, like I said earlier, this is a very easy DIY. It shouldn't take you long to do it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the PCV valve on this side, remove this side, and then we'll go from there. I've heard in the past that these fittings are on the PCV valve are a pain to remove because you have to release all the clips at once. Um, um, so I got these two pick tools and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so here's the PCV hose. Uh, quick note, these little plastic fittings that keep the hose in place, they're so fragile, you gotta be very careful. Um, they're not very flexible. Um, and if you're using any kind of metal tools, wanna be careful, you can break them, snap them, and then there you go. Now you gotta go buy another expensive part. I'm not sure if they sell this separately, neither. But yeah, I was being very careful. I took my time and I still think I cracked one of them just a bit. There's like a little hairline crack right here. I didn't break it all the way. Um, it should be fine. But yeah, that's what happens. You got to be very careful. But anyways, remember all that blow by I was telling you guys? Look at this. You see that? Imagine that. All that is going through your intake system. Like, it's nasty. And keep in mind, my engine hasn't been running for like the last hour. So the oil and stuff has been able to settle. Yeah, you see that? All that gunk, all that buildup, uh, oil, fuel, particle mixture, all of that residue is all going straight to your intake valves and it's caking them up. Imagine having a very high mileage 335i, 150,000 miles, um, and it's never got a walnut blast and you got all this blow by just circling through the system if that was probably look like and your car can probably be running 20 million times better if the valves are clean and if you properly maintained it with let's say a oil catch can so you can um, prevent a lot of those deposits all right next up is uh, removing the ends here so this portion right here has to come off uh, we won't reuse this hose here and then we need to fit in on this side as well. So the absolutely easiest way to remove the fittings on the side is to apply some heat to this section right here. And you should be able to pull them right off. So either a heat gun, blow dryer, even if you have a lighter. Be careful with the lighter though. You wanna go around it. Don't stay in one spot all the time. It'll probably mess things up. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that.
There you go. Oh yeah, nice and nasty. There it is. All right, so now we have everything that we need. We got both hoses. This one's gonna, I think it's gonna be going into the intake inlet with this fit in right here. And then this one's gonna be coming out of the crankcase. And then we'll put this valve on either side. I'm probably gonna go ahead and lube up this side because this is a very tight fit. Much easier. All right, so I stepped away. Uh, so I can try to squeeze the fit in onto this hose. That was the hardest thing. I mean, look how red my hands are. I was putting some serious elbow grease in there. I think I got it as tight as I could. It's not coming out. It's not wiggling anymore. Uh, I think we're good. It doesn't come with any clamps or anything like that, so I don't think you need that. There's definitely something very strange with this one right here, uh, the fit in. It fits on this side, right? But that's not the side that goes into the inlet. It's actually this side that should go into the inlet which is too big. And then if you look at the catch can, right? It'll go through here. It fits perfectly on there. But if you put it on here, it's not gonna go through. Meaning one of these are not gonna fit. So I went back to the engine to see what the hell was going on. And I noticed uh, the female input that goes into the inlet is actually a very big male. And it fits right into that big opening of this hose. Meaning I didn't really have to remove this from the old hose. This is essentially going to make a direct connection right here to the connection that's over there to the inlet. And then this portion is going to go over to the old catch can. There we go. All right, so this end is going to go right here. God, this is going to be a very tight fit, just like the other end was to the fitting. Ah, and it's a very tight space to work with too. All right, so what I ended up doing is just remove this from the inlet so I can fit the holes onto this um, outside of the engine compartment because it's just too much of a tight squeeze back here So I'm gonna go ahead and install this and then I'll go ahead and install it back to the inlet It could be a little bit of a pain in the butt just kind of routing the hose back here because there's limited space uh, But it should be all right. So the first thing you'll notice once you route the, the longer hose that comes from the crankcase It's a very long hose and I think uh, They do it purposely that way you have more than enough you can measure it and then you can cut it. It's always better to have an excessive amount than not having a long enough one. And then that would be an issue. So let's see. All right, so this is how it's going to go. The shorter one, the U-shaped one that goes into the intake inlet. Uh, it's going to go on the right-hand side of the oil catch can. And then the longer one that's coming from the crankcase is going to go on the left-hand side. I'm going to go ahead and measure it a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut accordingly. So I'll cut the longer holes like right i to give it a little bit of wiggle room, maybe like right here. All right, and that should be able to go right in there at perfect length. Let's take a look. All right, both hoses are on. Now I just have to find a way to kind of mount this somewhere. Probably got to mount it to this brace with the zip tie. All right guys, check it out. So we got the holes running from the engine over to the left side of the oil catch can. It's very important that it runs to this side on this particular oil catch can because the baffle area is on this side. So on this side, there's nothing. Everything just kind of drops into the bottom of the can. Um, and then the air goes on through this side. There's the baffle that's right underneath that I showed you guys earlier. That's gonna limit the amount of gunk that makes it through. Then it goes to the inlets, to the turbo, to the intercooler charge pipe, into the intake manifold with less gunk, less carbon buildup. I didn't really know where to mount it, but this seemed like the perfect area. I only did one zip tie at first, but then I noticed there was some rattling going on, which I did not want. So I went ahead and put a second zip tie here. Maybe later on I'll figure out where else to mount it, but it doesn't look too bad there, honestly. And it's not messy at all. It looks really neat to be honest. And check this out, it's pretty tight on there. It's not bumping into anything metal. There's nothing in the way that's hot. Yeah, looks good. All right, so last thing to do is to uh, take all the stuff that I took off the engine bay, put it back on there, 
and then we'll turn on the car. So real quick, I noticed something as I was putting the engine cover back on. The back section, like this little strip back here, is touching the hose that leads to the inlet. Um, I rotted it in a way that it doesn't really interfere and it doesn't really puncture it or anything like that, but it is rubbing up against it. And I'm afraid that all the vibration that happens under the engine is gonna ruin that hose. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this engine cover and cut that back strip off. That way it does not interfere and it doesn't ruin the hose. All right, so everything's installed back into the engine bay, and as you can tell, you can barely see the old catch can. It's right back there. It's pretty stealth, and since it's black, it blends in with the rest of the engine bay. Let's go ahead and start the car. Shout out to Aza Auto Wheel. No visible leaks. Nice and tight. It's good. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. That is the oil catch can, and it's one hell of a preventative maintenance for your direct fuel injection car, especially one that's turbocharged like the N54 on my 335i. I highly recommend you get one and install it. It's very easy to do. But wait, don't leave just yet. There are two BMW videos that I highly recommend you guys watch. One is on why your BMW rides like crap and how you can fix it for only $3. I'll put that video like right here. And the second video are two parts that every BMW needs to replace on their car before it's too late. I'll put that video right here. If you don't see any of the two videos right here, I'll link them down in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.